Hi, my name is Samantha and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the Dulles Expo show. Let's get into it. If you haven't already watched all my other videos from the Dulles Expo, go ahead and check those out and then you'll know where we're starting from and let's get into it. So this is my fifth time at the Dulles Expo. This is my third time working with uh, Capital Arts. I did not attend their spring show, nor did I attend their October show this year. So this is my first show with them this year. I did two shows with them last year. Um, as you well know, my booth has significantly incre uh, increased, improved, as well as my products have improved. My name has changed, much, much changed. So it's very hard to compare last year to this year, but significant improvements. So. The setup was on Thursday night, and then the show was from 10 to 5 on Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday it was from 10 to 4. And I had a 10 by 10 booth, no special accommodations. I didn't pay for electricity. I didn't pay for Wi-Fi. I didn't pay for um, drapes. I didn't pay for tables. I didn't pay for chairs. I didn't pay for, uh, what else could you pay for? A bigger booth space. I didn't pay for a corner space. I didn't add anything additional, just the base paid for my application, paid for my booth, $675. So quite a steep fee. Um, on Friday, I had uh, $480 in sales. And then on Saturday, I had $688 in sales and Sunday, $360 in sales. So overall, not as great as I would hoped. Um, on Friday, like I said, it was $480 in sales, 23 sales, reusable towels, I sold 16. Um, and so that was $256 in reusable towels and then 38 jar openers, which is 228 jar openers. Saturday was $668 with 32 sales. Uh, that is 15 reusable towels, $240, and then 69 jar openers, uh, which is $414. And then Sunday was $360 with 22 sales. Um, and that was $160 uh, of reusable towels, 10 reusable towels, and then 30 jar openers, $180 in jar openers. So overall, $1,528 with 77 sales, 41 reusable towels, $656, and then 137 jar openers, totaling an 822. So I think this actually was my first show of the year that I sold more dollar value in um, jar openers than I did reusable towels, which generally doesn't happen because the reusable towels are a higher price point. Reusable towels is a set of eight for $16, and then the jar openers are $6 each or three for 16. So my most common price is $16, and if they pay cards, $16.85. Either they're getting one towel or three jar openers is my most common sale. Um, granted, I will accept part of the blame for this show that this was the end of my inventory. This was my last show of the year. I did not restock for this show as I was trying to clean out my inventory so that we can restart fresh for next year. So I did have quite a few people that were like, oh, do you have this pattern? Oh, do you have this? Granted, I've told you guys that happens at every single show, but it was more, it was happening more this weekend. And I know that um, there were some other vendors that felt the same way. Uh, so pros and cons. Pro, they gave out bags. Giving out bags from the vendor is very helpful. Um, it helps me as a vendor that I do not have to give out as many bags. Granted, at every single show, every single customer, I offer a bag. Is that cash or card? Do you need a bag? Every single customer. So that if they would like a bag, I'm going to give them a bag. Now, because I'm so sustainable, I do not give out plastic bags. So my bag costs are higher. I either give out a paper bag or an organza bag. So my ga my bags do have a significant more cost per bag. So I would prefer to not give out bags. Plus, being sustainable, why do you need an extra bag? Um, I also do not put any tissue paper or anything like that in my bag. The only thing I put in there is my card that I've told you guys about. And then I do have uh, my business card. Usually I don't give out both, I'll give out one or the other. Um, so I, like I said, ask if they need a bag. So the show giving out bags does allow for me to save my bags and cut down on costs. Cause then I, when I ask, do you need a bag? They generally say, hey, I already have one. But some people have already filled up the bag, so they do need a bag. Or with the jar openers, a lot of people just put in their purse. So another pro, 
is that there was music. I've talked about this before that it is kind of awkward sometimes, especially in a large space, or it just makes your head hurt if there's not um, ambiance music or just elevator music. It doesn't need to be loud because that on the other side is like the cons because I've worked shows where there's live music and it's way too loud and then you can't even hear what the customer is saying. So that's very frustrating. So there is there's a balance. It needs to be a low enough level where you can have a conversation. And it's nice when there is music because then you can have a conversation with the person in front of you without the person across the table or across the hall being able to hear you. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, at the Ida Lee show, there was not music. Um, another pro is that it's a clean and safe environment. I've talked about this before that there are two uh, large sets of bathrooms. There are um, different um, janitors, custodians, whatever is the proper term for the lovely people that keep the building clean. Um, they were working diligently throughout the weekend, keeping the building clean. Um, also, when uh, the vendors leave at night, the building is locked and there is security, so that's great. Um, still put the um, cheat over top of my booth. Um, I've talked about this before though, that it's not the end of the world to me if one thing does get stolen, but I'm not gonna make it easier for somebody. Uh, another pro is that there is space behind the curtain, or there was space behind the curtains this weekend. Uh, there wasn't a ton of space. It was only about maybe two feet, but it's better than nothing. I particularly like it as a buffer between you and the person behind you. Um, I don't particularly like being back to back with another vendor. Uh, there have been times when someone's stuff falls over and then it comes into your booth or if someone's just a loud person or they have a loud thing in their booth. There are uh, different vendors that pay for electricity or they are doing something in their booth that is uh, loud or disruptive into your booth that makes it harder for you to sell. So I do like that bit of buffer and it worked out for my neighbor because he needed a little extra space and so he asked me if he could use the space. I'm not using it. My goal is to have all my inventory out on top of the table so that it's available for the customer's purchase. So I wasn't using any of the space behind the curtains, but I do like that bit of buffer. Now, um, the cons is that you do have to pay to get in. It was $10 a ticket. Now that being said, they did hand out or did hand out they did send out a free code for the vendors to share with their customers, which if you follow me on Instagram, that would be the easiest place to find it. But I've also been putting it from the time that I got it in the description of my uh, recent videos. And like I said, I tried to print this out at Ida Lee because I did see a lot of repeat customers from Ida Lee to Dulles because they were back to back weekends. Um, that was both a pro and a con. It is wonderful seeing customers again. It's wonderful hearing from someone that they love the product, but it is a con in the fact that they are not likely going to purchase from me two weekends in a row. So that's something that I have learned that I need to not be going after the same demographic within a short time period. Um, another con for me personally was uh, Friday. I had um, a personal event come up that I found out about uh, a month prior and I had asked for a little leeway, a little assistance, a little exception, and I was um, not, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? There was not compromise. So um, I was very grateful that I was able to find someone that I trust that was able to help me out and cover me in my booth. Um, so all went well in that regard. Um, but that leads me to my next con is that um, the Capital Arts show does offer booth sitters. It's something that they do to provide a little bit extra for the vendors. It does not cost anything. There is no tip. It is just a nice thing that they do. I acknowledge all of that. This is the first time that I have ever asked for a booth sitter and you ask for a 15 minute period. So I had asked on Friday so that there, the person that was helping me could have a bit of re relief away from the booth for a midway through the day. And then on Saturday for myself, I had asked for a booth sitter midway through the day. Neither day did the booth sitter show up nor did I get an email saying, hey, we're sorry, we had too many people sign up, or hey, our booth setters were sick today. There was no communication along that regard. As far as I could see, I could be wrong. Maybe something went to my spam folder and I did not see it. So if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But um, that was uh, a bit frustrating on my part that I was um, 
looking forward to using the benefit that they were offering and then there was not follow through. Um, another con for me is the high curtains. I find it very claustrophobic both as a vendor and as a customer when you have someone in a 10 by 10 booth space and there are what 10 foot 12 foot curtains it's very um I don't know how to explain it I mean I'm showing you guys a picture granted it can definitely happen that you show up and both people next to you have tall displays it definitely happens but um I definitely prefer when I go to a large venue and there is only the half half uh, dividers. Um, now I have been fortunate that most times when I have been in a convention center or expo center that I have had uh, in the most cases I've had one person with a tall wall and then um, a short wall. So it's worked in my favor that it's a little less claustrophobic because one wall is nice. It's a nice backdrop but two walls just makes you feel like you're in a little a little dorm, a little tunnel, a little little alcove. So that can also make it hard for the customer to want to come in or they can also as they're walking by miss you very quickly because their eye just goes to the next thing now the flip side of that i've also heard the negative of the short walls people don't like that then your booth looks like it's spilling into the next person i had this happen to me last year um, when i was next to my friend andrew who sells children's books we had the little divider in between us and on both sides, tall walls. Um, my boot, my tables um, that I've talked to you guys about, uh, I'll have the video linked down below. My tables are taller. So my tables being taller blocked the little divider. So, and he had black tablecloths and I had black tablecloths. So people thought that we were one booth, which, I mean, he's a great guy. I have nothing against him in that way, but it was it was a uh, discussion with each person that no he's his own booth where I'm my own booth you know like trying to make that separation it was confusing to people so I don't know there's pros and cons to everything um, and granted this weekend even if there wouldn't have been or when I was at Dulles uh, even if I wouldn't have had the tall walls in my particular instance it would have still happened because the person on the left of me um, had canvas art so they had the um, stiff gray walls um, which are very professional very nice looking and then on the other side of me um, uh, he had uh, you can buy your own of the silver poles whatever they're called that the expo puts up and he had red drapery so they were both very professional looking both all the way up to the the tallest point so even if I wouldn't have had the walls provided by the expo I would have still been blocked in with two walls which happens you don't know until you get there um, I just would rather it not be the case from the start if that makes any sense so last comment on the whole show is that like I said it wasn't as great of a show as I had hoped for um, with how much effort um, time, effort, energy, uh, the cost, you know, this was a four day show in the fact that um, set up on Thursday. So I had to drive out there four times. Um, the expo center is close enough to me that I don't need a hotel, but it is far in the regards of like, it's like a commute to work. Um, so it does take gas and also with the booth costing more. So all of those factors made my profit be even lower. I was much more successful and much more profitable when I was at Idly the weekend before. Uh, and then just because that there is uh, a lot of traffic, like on Friday and Saturday, there were quite a few people in the Expo Center. Not as busy, busy as November, but there were quite a few people. Um, I do feel like the event company did a good job bringing people in. However, those people were not buying as much as previous shows. Um, I was just as energetic, just as talking um you know helping every customer that i could um and like i said when i was in there in november i felt terrible i was under the weather weather i i myself do not feel like i promoted my booth that well i did better in november than i did in december so i don't know and like i said it was quite a few of the same idly people so i don't know if that was the factor um i did make friends with some people that were of a similar price point to me and they were about at the same number of sales. So I know that I wasn't the only one who was struggling. Um, so I don't know if I will do another show with them or not. Um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, 
at the Dallas Expo, as of right now, there are only two event companies there. So as a vendor, our options are pretty limited, but as a vendor, we vote with our money. We vote with signing up for a show or not signing up for a show, uh, just as the event company either accepts you to the show or denies you to the show. So it's two way street. That being said, this was uh, my last show of the year and I was so grateful for everything, everyone that came out to support me. I'm so grateful to everyone that supported me all year. I cannot wait to do the full 2022 recap video for you guys. I know that was uh, one of the most popular videos from last year. So that'll be coming out next week. I need to get all my data together. Um, as you know, I'm an open book. It's all out there. Ask me anything you want. Um, I also have, like I said, the um, big haul video. So I'm really looking forward to showing you guys that. That's my last two videos of the year. Um, the recap of 2022 as well as the restock for 2023. Uh, let me know in the comments down below, what fabric do you think I ordered the most of? There is a fabric that I am now in possession of six bolts of the same fabric. Let me know if you know what it is in the comments down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day. Something else cool I forgot to mention you guys is that I had this guy, um, I believe he got three jar openers or one jar opener and then he got towels, but he had two separate transactions and he paid in exact change both times and he paid with $2 bills, which was so cool. And if you know, two is my favorite number, you know, so sustainable, 2022, 22, this was my most successful show. So I don't know, just manifesting something really cool. I don't think I'll ever spend these $2. I have them just like taped to my little book here. I thought that was so cool.